All right, here we go. So if you don't feel like you have enough space behind your spot illustration, remember you can always grow your canvas size to give yourself more space. So this is the one I demoed at the beginning of the assignment, get you guys thinking about it. I can just take that over, put it onto this, which is 18 by 24 inches, and that's one option, right? But like I said, you want to have multiple text blocking options that you can just rough in. Another way you can do it, besides just hand drawing it, is using your shape tools, right? So you can use your rectangle, and instead of having it with a fill, you now know the difference between fills and strokes. You can make the fill empty, kind of these vector shape tools within, within Photoshop. And then I can modify these, right? I can use Command T, and I can try, okay, what if it says uh, man up, like in this space here, running behind my illustration. And if I want to curve it, I can just warp it. I'm going to teach you in this class, because it's not a graphic design class, I'm going to teach you how to do this mostly visually, controlling the vectors and controlling the type uh, as pixels. We're not going to use a lot of the, the type tools within the programs. That's how graphic designers would do it, and there's reasons for that. The main reason is that we don't have administrative privileges in the new security protocols for the district to download typefaces onto these computers, which is something that graphic designers, they collect typefaces and just have, have tons to use. So we're going to learn how to, to image trace from typefaces we find and make them into exactly what we want. So we're going to be forced to modify them. But before we figure out the actual type design, we want to figure out just where it goes. So if I liked that, then I might duplicate that and then flip it. Shrink it. Because what you're doing with text blocking is you're making kind of priorities, right? Of where you'll see certain information. And if you think of tattoo design, tattoo design often combines text and image. Because people will want to put, you know, mom on their arm or something like that. And so they'll have, they'll have designs, but then they'll often have banners. Right? So that's another way you can play with type with your image. You can text block it as a banner that goes above, below, on top, or integrated into your image. So I take a lot of inspiration from, type from a tattoo design sometimes. And these are some traditional banner shapes, which kind of block your type for you. So you get the idea. Lots of variations to play with. So I have, let's merge these two together. And then I can just, once I know kind of the space, then I can play with, well, how will it actually show? You know, it's going to be man up. So you make kind of blocks. So it's going to be M-A-N and then a dash, and then a U, and then a P. So you're basically figuring out, okay, I need to fit five letters and a dash across that space. And then down here, it's going to be a lot more. So it's going to be T, I, dash, C, O, R, E. And then that might work. Of course, I did that on the wrong layer. <laughs> That's okay. Combine them. And then are you going to push gray and push the wording? Like, are you going to accent it? So are the, are the top and bottom on two 
two different layers so that if you want to push the top layer to the or like the top part to the back and bring the bottom to the front. Yeah, absolutely. That so so that's it? another thing you can think about. Like do you want your illustration to be over the top of it or do you want your text to go over your illustration? You have full control, right? Okay. In this blocking sketch, I actually just moved them all together, but at any time I can just say, okay, let me take that, duplicate it onto a new layer, right? And now I'll move all of these behind my, my spot illustration. Of course, my spot illustration is just line art anyway, but as full color, it would overlap here, and then this would overlap it. So yeah, you can play with different things. I can also, once I just know the vague shape I want it to be, the general shape I want it to be, then I can play a lot with the actual type setting. Like I can make the M larger than the A. I can play with different edges. What I'm trying to just figure out is what kind of character of shape do I want? So right now, guys, maybe you can help me out, right? Do you like this better? It's more organic, or do you like this better? A little bit more directional. So this. So we got one vote for this one. I think I personally like this one better, but then I could do another solution that kind of goes in between. So in this solution, I'm going to take this, and I'm going to warp it more. So it has kind of that playfulness. And maybe I even push it kind of like the Amazing Spider-Man one does. Where it's a little bit more banner-like. Because he's kind of a knight on horseback, right? So it's kind of heraldic anyway. And then how do I play with the bottom? Let's see. I'm just playing with these compositing skills, right? I'll make it kind of fade a little bit. So I like that. I'm not sure I like this. So I'll keep the original, but maybe I'll just shrink it a little bit, minimize it. Because you want it to complement your image. But once you've text blocked it, you see you can live trace or you can uh, free transform it. And you'll always have, you know exactly where you need to fit all your letters. All the time. All right. So I say do at least three kind of sketches. This is just to kind of prepare yourself. And then once you kind of zero in on what you're thinking, you want to really get it placed in a way you're excited about and stretched. So these are text block sketches. The Latin alphabet that we use, it's all meant to fit within rectangles, right? For printing presses, for a typesetting, ever since the 15th century. So we have it kind of easy. As long as you can get the rectangle around the, the forms you want, you can visualize how readable it's going to be. All right, I think I'm good with that. Maybe I'll shrink the top a little bit. But once you've done three, I would usually say, like if you really cared about this, you, you might do five sketches, but then one of them is going to be clearly the strongest, you know, the most informed. Yeah, I think that works pretty well. I might just tweak it a little bit.
So I now have three possible solutions. And I have to choose a direction. So there's this one, this one, and then this one. I'm going to push this a little bit more directionally. Raise it up a little bit. and then play with the warp. And I always think of poster design along with kind of t-shirt design, like what's readable on a block, right? What's engaging, what will get me to pay attention as a viewer? All right, so once you have your text blocking, go ahead and save that as assignment six. And I'm just going to call this my poster and type design. So this is assignment six. I'm going to save that to the desktop. We're doing it in Photoshop. And then I'm going to take my, um, my folder, my assignment six folder, and I'm going to move that type design into it, right? Now, if this is the one I'm going for, I want to remind myself of that and maybe just make a quick screen grab of it. I'm thinking my poster boundaries will be around here. Because I want you to just have that open in preview when you start looking for type. So if we look at the assignment, you will see as you kind of look through that the second skill besides type blocking is to modify existing typefaces, text resources. And we're going to use defont.com for that. D-A-F-O-N-T.com. And once you get into this, you're going to choose something. I'm going to put, let's see, medieval. And there's going to be, actually not as many as I thought, but there's going to be lots, right? And maybe none, none of them are quite what I what I want. So maybe I look for animated. There's only three. Maybe I look for uh, title. I can look for poster. I'm still trying to find kind of the one I want. Poster modern. None. Let's just do poster. Now, modern typefaces are ones that are sans serif, that don't have any decorations. And then traditional fonts or typefaces, these are typefaces, they will have little decorations at the edges. These are called serifs. So that's one way you can kind of break them out. That's a modern typeface. This is a traditional typeface. two pages of this, of poster typefaces. And I want something that's just kind of has the right personality. But it can be hard to tell. So why don't I actually put my type in there? So my type is, for the top, 